A while back, I saw Dan Worrell's video on how he won the Loudness Wars. I honestly forgot most of what was in it. Uh, I have diagnosed dissociative amnesia, so I'm not particularly skilled in the whole remembering business. However, just recently I saw a short about how he actually didn't win the Loudness Wars because somebody else released a track that had an even higher LUFS measurement. Before seeing this short, I somehow didn't recognize that this was an ongoing competition. I even saw this comment here quite high up which says if you can push it past plus 4 LUFS, you can claim your spot in the Guinness Book of World Records. This was shocking to me because I actually already knew how to win this loudness war, and how to do so in a mathematically optimal way that nobody can ever possibly beat. And in fact, I can get this up to not just plus 4, not just plus 5, not just plus 6, but plus 6.4 LUFS. I repeat, plus 6.4 LUFS. Yeah. Um, upon release of this video, the Loudness War is officially over, and I am the one who wins. Uh, before I continue and provide proof that I won and that this is the highest possible score, first I'll go ahead and play the song. Disclaimer, YouTube's audio playback isn't lossless, so it will skew the results. I'll explain how to obtain the lossless audio later in the video. And now, get ready for what is, according to the International Telecommunication Union's loudness measurement standard, the loudest piece of digital audio that can possibly exist in this universe. Obviously, this is going to be ridiculously loud. Turn down your computer volume, way down, I mean way, way down, down to 1% or less, seriously. Uh, protect your ears, protect your equipment, protect your loved ones, all right, you, you get the picture. All right, ready? 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 Let's go! You're probably a bit confused. No, this isn't a troll nor an April Fool's video. The audio you just didn't hear is, in fact, plus 6.4 LUFS, the highest possible LUFS you can obtain. However, that audio coincidentally sits entirely outside of the frequency range of many lossy audio compression algorithms as well as the audible frequency range of human hearing. Here's a limiter plugin I programmed by myself which has an LUFS meter built in, the GUI being designed by my friend Grimnir. I didn't use a library to do this for me, I created the entire LUFS measurement process from scratch according to the ITU-RBS1770-5 standard. My meter's measurements match with those of other LUFS meters, so this acts as a credential to show that I most likely know what I'm talking about. But, like all of my other videos, if I get anything wrong, I will list every way in which I am wrong in the pinned comment of this video so you can be sure that you aren't getting any misinformation from me unlike most other music and audio related channels out there. The first step of the LUFS algorithm is the K-weighting. This is done by applying a filter to the audio that mimics the human ear's varying level of sensitivity to different frequency ranges. Except it, uh, d doesn't do a very good job of it? <laughs> it's, uh, it's literally just a high pass and high shelf. A big issue with this should jump out to you immediately. Most humans have their hearing range cap out at about 20 kilohertz at most, and usually quite a bit lower than that. And despite this, these ultrasonic frequencies are boosted more than anything else. This means that, even with loudness normalization applied, the loudness warp still kind of exists at least a little bit? Uh, those who slap on an aggressive low-pass filter to remove those ultra-high frequencies will find themselves with a notably louder playback compared to other songs after LUFS normalization. I won't go into detail about the LUFS algorithm in this video because it would take quite a while and it isn't actually important to this video's main topic, but in super quick summary, if the filter value is multiplied by itself to get power, then it's average over time within 400 milliseconds of gain blocks with 75% percent overlap, and an absolute gain is applied to normal blocks wider than 70 LKFS, and a relative gain is applied to normal blocks wider than 10 LUFS and the remaining average LKFS. And, well, I skipped a few steps, but that's pretty much what's going on for the integrated LUFS. So, how do we obtain the highest possible LUFS measurement? It's as simple as playing a tone at exactly the Nyquist frequency which is half of the sample rate, at an amplitude of 0 dBFS. Anything lower than this won't get as high of a score for two reasons. First of all, a high shell filter never actually reaches its set gain. It asymptotes to it infinitely. This means the highest possible frequency has the highest possible gain for that filter. 
Second of all, and more importantly, a square wave at a lower frequency within an octave would have aliasing. These alias frequencies are significantly lower and wouldn't obtain the maximum benefit of the high shelf in the K weighting. So, the highest possible LUFS loudness score you can get for your song is alternating negative ones and ones spit through your speaker, and the result is total silence. I graciously accept my Guinness World Record and will be using my newfound fame and authority to take over the American country, multiply dragon fruit production by the thousands, and drive its price down to pennies so everybody can afford these batayas regardless of their financial situation. And I'll make slavery illegal. Thanks for watching. Oh, give me credits, music, the music you see when the video ends, even when you're not giving credit to anybody. Oh, yeah. いやー、まるで別の世界が開けたようです。まさに毎晩がアバンチュール。明日はどんなことが起こるかと思うと、毎日が嘘のように新鮮です。それじゃどうです。あなたの返信をもっと完全なものにしてみませんか。え今のところは